Hello everybody. Welcome to Quantum Mechanics. I'm Professor Stephen Wiggins and I'm going to be your guide to learning this truly amazing subject this year. But before I get into details about how the course is going to work, I want to say something about the topic itself and how it came to be. Quantum Mechanics was developed around the beginning of the 20th century in an effort to understand new phenomena in atomic physics that were being revealed by new experimental capabilities. So, what do you do when you, you're faced with a new problem that you want to try to explain? Well, you try to understand it and explain it in the context of a framework and theory that you're quite familiar with and that you know it works. In this case, it would be classical mechanics, the same classical mechanics that you learned about in A-levels and in your first year in mathematics here at Bristol. The problem was that it just didn't work, meaning it didn't agree with experiment or even it contradicted basic physical principles. So what to do? Well, a completely new way of looking at nature, a new theoretical framework was developed, and that's quantum mechanics. Interestingly enough, in the course of the development, mathematics had to be developed in a way that supported it. So that's one of the things we're going to learn about this year. But I want to tell you a bit about it in the context of the people who invented much of quantum mechanics. So the man on the left is Paul Dirac. And Dirac is somebody you should all be familiar with. Dirac was born in Bristol, 1902, and was an undergraduate at Bristol. He got a degree, first degree in electrical engineering. Afterwards, he applied for postgraduate studies at Cambridge. They offered him a small fellowship, which he figured was not going to be enough to support him. So he went back to school in Bristol and got another degree in mathematics. After that, he went off to Cambridge. They gave him a slightly bigger fellowship, and that worked out well for Dirac as well as for physics. So Dirac did many things in quantum mechanics that we're going to learn about, but one thing that you may not realize is that in those little squiggly designs in the stones at the entrance to the new mathematics building and the same type of squiggly designs in the glass in the entryway, those are Dirac's bras and kits. And by the end of the course, actually by the middle of the course, you're going to really know well what Dirac's bras and kits are and how you manipulate them and how they make much of quantum mechanics very easy to deal with in terms of calculations. Now, the man in the middle is Heisenberg. He's famous also for many things in quantum mechanics, but you probably heard about the famous Heisenberg uncertainty principle. And that's one aspect of quantum mechanics that differs significantly from classical mechanics, and we're going to spend a great deal of time learning about it in the context of specific physical problems and thinking about what it means and what the implications may be. Now, the man on the right is Erwin Schrödinger. Schrödinger is famous for the Schrödinger equation. That was the equation to my upper left at the beginning of this video. And the Schrödinger equation, in some sense, you could view as the quantum mechanical version of Newton's second law from classical mechanics. Now, the mathematics that these people brought to quantum mechanics is interesting. Dirac brought the classical mechanical formalism for Hamiltonian mechanics. Heisenberg developed matrix mechanics to develop matrix theory to develop his point of view of quantum mechanics. And Schrodinger, in his Schrodinger equation, developed the notion of eigenvalue problems on function spaces. Quantum mechanics was, uh, let me mention that all of these men were awarded Nobel Prizes for their work in quantum mechanics. But not all the work in quantum mechanics was carried out by men. A number of women made absolutely fundamental contributions to quantum mechanics, and here are three of them. So the woman on the left is Mary Curie. Curie won a Nobel Prize in Physics in 1903 for her work 
in the discovery of radioactivity, along with her husband, Pierre Curie and Henri Becquerel. She also won a second Nobel Prize in physics, or sorry, in chemistry in 1911 for a discovery of radium and polonium. The only person to ever win Nobel Prizes in both chemistry and in physics. The woman in the middle had an impact that uh, has had far reaching consequences and implications on our day to day life. Lisa Meitner is responsible, along with Otto Hahn, for discovering nuclear fission. Hahn was awarded the Nobel Prize for this discovery of nuclear fission in 1944. Lisa Meitner was overlooked in that Nobel Prize. This is considered one of the greatest injustices of science and is still, people find it hard to believe even today. Um, Meitner continued her work. She loved her research, but it really is an unfortunate omission. Now, the woman on the right is Maria Geppert Meyer. Um, she was a nuclear physicist and developed the first mathematical model that explained the structure of the nucleus. She was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1963. These were the first two women, Curie and Geppert Meyer, to be awarded Nobel Prize in Physics. Two years ago, 2018, Donna Strickland became the third female Nobel Laureate in Physics for her work in pulsed lasers, which also heavily uses quantum mechanics. So back to the course. The course is going to use my book, Elementary Quantum Mechanics, which I'm going to be, make freely available to everyone. So let me tell you a little bit about the material that we're going to cover in, that bo in the book. So the book has five chapters. We will be just covering the first four. Now, there are 11 weeks in the term up to Christmas, Christmas ending December 18th. There's a week after Christmas, but that's going to be used only for revision. There'll be no new material introduced after Christmas. So 11 weeks. So I intend to cover chapter one in two weeks, chapter two in three weeks, chapter three in three weeks, chapter four in two weeks. That adds, adds up to 10. So where's the extra week? Well, this year we're going to, we're, we're going to use, we're probably need a lot of flexibility and I'm building in that extra week. We're certainly going to use it if we don't go as quickly as we need to. If things come up in some way, we have to um, um, change the way in which we teach because of the pandemic. We'll have that extra week, but we're going to definitely use it in, in, the, in this course. Now, how am I going to deliver the material to you? Well, I'm going to have a lot of online or pre-recorded lectures. What I imagine is that I have roughly five for chapter one, six for chapter two, six for chapter three, and five for chapter four. Okay, and we'll see how that goes. I mean, as, as we go along, I may have to introduce supplementary material because I haven't been so clear and need to uh, explain some things further. We'll see. So, there will be three timetabled lecture slots each week. Um, and in each of those, it w w I will have uh, made available the uh, pre-recorded lectures. One lecture will at least be live, either live online or live face-to-face. -face. We don't quite know yet how that's going to work out. We should know by the middle, of, uh, middle to end of, se of September. And uh, that's going to be the plan. And so hopefully this will, uh, this will work out well. What I hope to do is in the uh, timetable slots online, I will give you their pre-recorded work ahead of time, pre-recorded lectures ahead of time, and we will, you will have looked at them, and we will go through them and discuss them. What I want you to do is come to me with what you don't understand, and we will talk about that in the context of the... Uh, the book material, as well as the problems. 
Now each chapter has a variety of problems at the end of each chapter. And I have a complete solutions manual with detailed solutions of all the problems in the book, which I'm going to make available to you from day one. And so we're going to go through these in some detail. Okay. So you can download my book from the internet. And I'm also going to post it on Blackboard. My lectures. If you want my lectures, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and you will be notified when I first post them. So I'll continually add to the YouTube channel. I'll put extra material on there and supplementary material. So click on the button or the link at the bottom of this video and you will be up to date on the latest in quantum mechanics at Bristol this year. So this is different, obviously this year, different way of delivering content. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, it's not the standard way of all of you going to a big lecture theater, me showing up in the, at the front of the class and writing on the chalkboard or presenting things on the overheads to you. This really makes, has made me think about the best way for you to learn how to deliver the material to you. And I hope that it works out even better than the usual way. That's the intention. And as we work together this year, it's going to be very interesting, but very rewarding for you. Also, as you take your first steps into the world of quantum mechanics, because I'm sure it's going to be the, the, um, your first, really, it will be the first steps for you. Because at Bristol, we have courses in quantum chaos, quantum information theory, and quantum field theory. This is the first required course for all of those. It's a fascinating topic that I enjoy very much. Hopefully I can give to you that same enjoyment and we're going to have a lot of fun. And by the end of the year, you're going to really feel that you've learned something interesting, worthwhile, that you're, that you're going to take with you for the rest of your career. Okay, I will see you soon and check out my YouTube channel. Bye.